praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Ghost. That's the name of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Thank you, Sister Monique, for ministering to us this morning, and Brother Chris, uh, for you guys getting up early, getting all the equipment set up, making sure everything's done. Thank you for your sacrifice. I'm just going to let you know I ain't got no reward for you, but there is one in heaven. Amen. <laughs> there is one in heaven. Amen. God is going to remember what you guys have done for his people. Amen. So uh, somebody give uh, the Staples family a, a praise the Lord. Uh, just let them know how much we love them. Amen. 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 Well, we thank the Lord for all those that serve and promise, and there's always opportunities. So if you've, uh, you know, you're a part of, you feel that you're a part of this fellowship, and you feel that uh, you want to be doing something in the kingdom, uh, trust me, I got something for you. There are things that we need to be done. We'll uh, pray about it. Let the Lord uh, to, to guide us. Um, amen. But you but we we got room. Uh, we got room for the, for the laborers. Uh, good morning, everyone. And praise the Lord. Thank you for showing up. There's a there's a few names I've never seen before and I'm not going to embarrass you, but I do welcome you. And we thank you. Whoever invited you. Amen. God bless you. Um, we pray that you get something out of this. We've been doing this for quite a while. So we know how to have church uh, virtually. Amen. Some of us have mastered us. Some of us are doing OK. Some of us are struggling, amen, and we go through these seasons sometimes. So it's, all, it's going to be what you get out of it, what you put into it. So um, if, you, if you put into it, amen, it can become real, just like the word of God. If, you, if, you, if, you look for, if you're looking for the Lord, you will find him, amen. And so if you come this morning looking to hear from the Lord, looking for an experience of Jesus Christ, I'm going to let you know you will find it. Now, if you just come to be entertained, you might laugh once or twice. I'll tell a couple of jokes every now and again, or Sister Faith will say something to me. Uh, amen. And it, it'll be funny. I trust, trust me, it'll be funny. Amen. Um, but we didn't come here to be entertained. And so we've come because we, uh, we need to know that the presence of God is still made available unto us. Uh, many of us that are seeking the rapture always had that moment when you're afraid. You call brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so, and brother so-and-so, and nobody answered. You're like, did I miss it? Amen. And what we don't want to miss is God's uh, snatching away of his church when he comes back to collect his saints. Uh, we don't want to miss out on his presence. We want to know that he's still with us. Many of us that God has called, we worry every day, Lord, am I still, am I, did you still call me? And you still want to use me? These are the things that are on our mind. And so we just trust that the Lord is going to visit us to confirm everything that he needs to uh, this morning. Amen. So again, thank you all for, for being on. Uh, we'll jump into the word here. Uh, Robin, you got a question? I was just going to ask you, I know yesterday was Charles' birthday and then Ivan's birthday. If you wanted to send them shout outs, unless I missed it, I'm sorry. No, okay. Well, we did recognize Charles, but you know what? I'm okay with recognizing Charles twice. I love him that much. He's my boy. Um, and then uh, Brother Ivan Gamble. So I don't know if y'all can want to come off of mute and wish those two men of God a, uh, a happy birthday and a praise the Lord. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Ivan. Happy Amen. Happy birthday, Chuck T. Is that Luca? That's Luca. Ch Chuck T. Brother Ivan. Happy birthday. Amen. I know what Ivan got for his birthday. He got another Raiders jersey. Amen. As, as in you got some more Raiders gear? Amen. Oh, because they're oh, because the Raiders left LA and went to Vegas. Mm -hmm. I forgot that they left to Vegas, so he can't. He got to wear the old jersey, which you can't tell the difference. So I don't know how he gonna pull that off. Hey, Amen. He'll figure it out. Just burn them, Ivan. Just burn all them clothes. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. Well, he's the one gonna be getting laughed at with the old LA stuff. So we praying for him. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And uh, Brother Charles works on the background, uh, not only here, but uh, Brother Charles is a, uh, uh, he believes that's his ministry, supporting churches and help grow. So that brother is working um, not only here at Promise, he's also working 
with Peace Apostolic Church. He's also doing his own business. He's also trying to be a, a father and a husband. Um, so continue to pray for Brother Charles that the Lord will continue to guide him and, and that he can be all the things that he's called him to be. As we pray for everyone, the same thing, <clears throat> that God will guide us all. Amen. I'm going to pray over this word and we'll go ahead and jump in. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we just thank you, Lord for your mercy and your long suffering, Lord God. Thank you for your faithfulness, Lord, in waking us up this morning. Lord God, we pray, Lord God, because we had enough faith to log in that you will bless us, Lord. Will you count that as faith, Lord God? We put in the extension on our web browsers. We clicked on the link, Lord God, just trusting, Lord God, that we were going to hear from you, Lord. Will you bless us according to that and count that as faith? Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we just ask that your word will go forth, Lord, and feed us, Lord, whatever it is, is we need, whether it's breakfast, whether it's lunch, whether it's meat or whether it's vegetables. Lord God, that you will feed us, Lord God, from your word. Lord, supply everything we need. We are all in a different moment and different seasons, Lord God, but individually we trust that your word can go forth and set on every single soul and do exactly what it needs to do. Yeah. And so, Lord, we just ask that you would transcend my understanding and that you would transcend mere English words, Lord God, but your spirit, Lord, will be life in these moments, Lord, touching us, Lord God, and challenging us in every way possible, Lord. Let us take down from things that are not like you, Lord God, let us remove our understanding and our preconceived notions that we may have Lord God that we may hear from you Lord I ask that you will get me out of the equation and allow your word to go forth Lord use me as you see fit Lord God but let me in decrease right now that you may increase Lord God we don't want Isaac's opinions we want the word of God Lord we don't want the old scriptures we need a timely message for today Lord God we want we want a, a current account by your scriptures that are life they give us life Lord they were life 2,000 years ago they are life today let them be be life today let the words come alive Jesus Christ as only you can thank you Lord we love you in Jesus name amen thank you Lord thank you Jesus I had to clarify myself in that prayer I found myself we don't want the scriptures on so somebody gonna be like what you mean we don't want the scriptures well what I mean is we don't want only words on a page but we want life amen. so if everybody's okay with me explaining that amen Thank you, Jesus. Um, amen. I don't want to be a stumbling block in any way, nor do I don't uh, want to offend my brothers and sisters, but to show forth the love of Jesus Christ that he has shown me. Amen. So today's topic is confession of faith. Now, I just want to warn everybody again, as we said earlier, you're going to get exactly out of this what you put in. Now, I believe, amen, that I'm going to uh, distribute several shoes. And I think every shoe that goes forth, everyone should try them on and see if it fits. Now, the one that fits, wear it. And the one that don't, then amen. But we have to be looking for God in the middle of these messages. Amen. We just can't come and say, hey, the, the, uh, the brother's going to say something. But we need to come with like, OK, Lord, you're going to tell me something. You're going to answer a question. You're going to confirm something. You're going to add to my understanding. Amen. Plenty of times we come to the, to the Lord like, oh, I'm just coming to praise the Lord, but I don't need to be corrected. Well, you're the number one person and I'm glad you're here. Thank you for coming. Amen. Because you're the one, amen, that God wants to warn. Amen. You're one of the ones in this number this morning. Amen. And so we have to be looking diligently. And, and I don't care if not just because it's on Zoom, but whether you're in person, whether it's Zoom, whether it's a YouTube video, uh, whether it's a big old galley at a stadium. Amen. If the word of the Lord is there, amen, ask him to show you. Amen. And I bet you you'll get one or two or three or, ten or 20 things, amen, that we need to be tightening up on. And Sister Crescent, amen, stop condemning yourselves for the things that you don't have, but, but learn how to worship and thank God for what you do. And when he shows you something that you're not, learn how to rejoice in that and don't be sad. Amen. It's a wonderful thing when God shows us, amen, what we're not. He doesn't show us those things to condemn us or to say that we're not worthy or to say that we're no good he spots it out because he loves you so much that he wants you to be more than who you are and that's maybe not just for Crescent but for somebody uh, right now but my sister Crescent you got to change your perspective when God shows you who you what you're not amen he shows you that because he's uh, willing to, sh to to take you unto a place amen that you haven't been before amen thank you Jesus amen and so today we're talking about a confession of faith amen one of the uh, how do I even go into this message you got to help me Jesus how do we even go into this message? Amen. Uh, one of the most disappointing things, amen, as a man of God is to, to hear a great sermon preached and 
and, and you see people's souls stirred up and people examining themselves and potentially convicted and ready to repent even. And at the end of the message, it was a fantastic message and it was all about God and it was all Christocentric, all in his word. It was biblically accurate. It was encouraging on all these things. And then at the end of the message, the person says, okay, if you want to be saved, close your eyes and repeat after me. And so we know that in several, several terms that some call it the salvation prayer and some call it the sinner's prayer. Amen. But at the end of most messages in, in popular contemporary Christianity, amen, you're going to hear a form of the sinner's prayer, amen, at the altar call. And it's, it's heartbreaking to me that know that someone is, is pouring out, amen, all of their humanity, all of their sinfulness, amen, looking for God, but are left empty. And I'm going to hopefully try to explain what I mean by being left empty. And everybody, they ask everybody to close your eyes and bow your head. And they say, by the confession of your faith, I want you to repeat after me. And it looks something like this, Lord, I'm a sinner in need of, in, in need of repentance or, or in need of salvation. I repent. And I ask you to come into my heart and be my God and my Savior. I trust you and I want you in my life. Something like that. I can't even say it because I've never said it before. And then they say, okay, that's it, you're saved. And then that person is looking for the magic in the booth, and there is no magic. And that person is looking for a change in their lives, and there is no change. Amen. And now where does this come from then? We have to start to examine. Now, most, most historians or most people will attribute the uh, sinner's prayer, the prayer of salvation, and to some of the great uh, uh, revivals that happened in the 30s and 40s and 50s through the likes of Billy Graham's and, 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 and others of those, um, I don't even know all their names, Kenneth Copeland and those things. And if I look at it, what they're really trying to do is just, number one, either fast track the plan of salvation or to be able to uh, give great numbers. Now, it blows us away when somebody says, oh, well, today, 500 people re uh, receive salvation. That is wonderful and dynamic. But how does that number come about? Mm -hmm. And many times as men, amen, uh, pastors, preachers, teachers, we want to be able to qualify our ministry by a quantity of souls that have been changed. Now, what we don't have God's permission to do is to be able to actually say, amen, um, who he saves and who he doesn't. And I'll go to the point to say that we can't change, amen, what God wants to do in a person. We can't rush a person into a change because we want to report a bigger number at the end of our service. I was paid $20,000 to preach this revival in the city and 20,000 people came. I can't leave here if only two people receive salvation. They paid me a lot of money. I need numbers. Now, I'm not saying this is exactly what happened, but I can tell you, being a man, being a human, this is the pressure that you have. Amen. And so God's plan of salvation is fast-tracked. Huh, glory, hallelujah, help me, Lord. And so when we talk about salvation, you'll hear me talk about salvation, and many of us, as this continuation, was saved, am saved, shall be saved, Amen. You'll also hear me sometimes say this term of initial salvation, and we know the fullness of our salvation is when we actually are translated, amen, into our new bodies, and our citizenship starts in heaven. That is the fullness of our salvation. That's when the whole thing is done. I'll also go out to say that here, we do not believe in once saved, always saved. If you have a problem with that, 714-679-6299, I will be patient to bring you to understanding, amen, or at least bring you to the scripture that the Lord will give you understanding. And I mean that I'm not being sarcastic, I'm serious, amen, because it's in the word, amen, hallelujah. But we know that God is uh, giving us, meeting us at our moment of faith, and he's walking with us, amen, until he comes for us, amen, which may be soon if we continue to see what's going on in Israel, amen. God may be coming sooner than we think. Knowing the seasons and the times, amen, then how can I leave someone stranded? When no one wants to be the one that's left here, amen, then how can I not give you exactly what God wants to do? Amen. amen. 
Me, I, I got something in common with Jesus. He said that I'm not willing that any shall perish, but all shall come to repentance. And I've had that same thing within me. I don't care. I don't want nobody to miss the mark. Amen. Hallelujah. And so the Lord has given me a, a heart for God's people. Amen. To understand where you are. Amen. And be able to walk with you. Now, many of us are, are, are in the same place. We want to walk with you until God brings you to the fullness of your understanding. Amen. But what does it start with? The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God because he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I will never ever and I and I'll charge everybody we can never ever ever dismiss someone's moment of faith but at the same token we can't leave them right there. We can't leave them right there. There's more to it that God wants to do. And I pray that I, the Lord will convince somebody in this hour because I can't do it. But I pray that the Lord will convince somebody that my brother, my sister, my son, my daughter, this thing that I've started in you, amen, I am not done. Amen. This thing that I want to do for you, amen, this assurance and this guarantee that I want to do for you, I am not done yet. Yes, I am drawing you with cords of love and we're blessed for that. You're blessed, my brother, my sister, that God is even thinking about you. Amen. Hallelujah. But there's somebody on here right now that God is not done with you. He has more that he has for you. We're living beneath our means. We're living beneath our privilege. When we hang our, our head low with a feeling of guilt and somebody says, repeat after me, and you say, I'm saved. Ah, I left you empty. I brought you into a war and you have no armor. You have no weapons. You are in trouble. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I hope it's quiet because somebody's taking notes. Now, I don't even care about shouting no more. There was a time when I used to, I'm going to get real honest, there was a time when I knew that I was called and I was going to be preaching. I wondered that if I could preach and people would start shouting and running the aisles. You know what? I pray that nobody shouts and run the aisles today. Amen. But I do pray that your spirit rejoices. Let me correct that. But sometimes we just need to sit down. Sit down. Just, let's just sit down. Amen. Let's get in the presence of God. And once I'm done, we can shout the aisles. Now, I do need Sister Robin to give me a couple of amens. Amen. Amen. But sometimes, amen, we need to shout and rejoice and celebrate God absolutely. But sometimes we just got to sit down. So let's sit down today, y'all. Take some notes because if this is not for you, this is for somebody in your circle. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Romans chapter 10. I'm going to be in King James Version, so... Everybody that got the uh, Bible passed down from grandma, amen. We're going to be able to use it. At the same token, I'm going to say, this is Isaac in his flesh. A couple of y'all using translations I just can't get with, amen. Y'all need to come back to Bible. <laughs> uh, that's Gino Jennings for you, amen. Romans chapter 10, 9, 13, let me come back to earth. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Romans chapter, 9, verses uh, chapter 10, verses 9 to 13. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. For the scripture saith whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For, verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Amen. Many of us rep recognize this. Amen. Amen. Many of us, amen, our, our, our initial moment of salvation when we were ready to repent, amen, something like this was said, amen, that if you will confess with your, with your mouth and believe in your heart, then you are saved. Amen. Now, the Bible says you shall be saved, and the preacher says you are saved, so we have a problem. Amen. So let's look at this. This passage is quoted all the time in altar calls. Amen. And you've heard it, and many of us, that was how we came to salvation. Now, um, I do remember when I was about 10, I went to a friend's church, and they told me to repeat after this. And I remember coming home saying, I'm saved. Amen. And then I think the next day I start stealing out of 7-Eleven. Amen. And so what I'm saying is that there was no change in me. 
Amen. Though I understood and I, and I knew that, uh, that God wanted something from me. Amen. Hallelujah. I, don't, I wasn't led into the water. Somebody grabbed my, my collar. Amen. But they didn't take me nowhere. They left me right where I was. Amen. 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 And so, amen. So when the, this, this, is, this is the foundation, amen, that we're seeing for the sinner's prayer. Amen. And it's an and, and it's and it's just it's just heartbreaking. Amen. That that you tell somebody to, I'm gonna repeat after this and you're saved. Amen. It's not it, my brother, and my sister. So again, I'm I'm not condemning everyone or making fun of anybody that that they had that moment and they lived that experience. But I want you to hold tight, amen, and get to the end of this message. And I want to show you what else we do after that. Amen. Hallelujah. So the first challenge that we have with this passage, amen, is that the context is all wrong. Now, amen. Now many of us Bob, that study the Bible and some of us are reading the Bible and some of us are studying. There's a difference. And one day on a Wednesday. I'm going to talk about that. Amen. But hallelujah. But anyway, sometimes we're looking at, amen, when we're studying our Bible, we have to remember, amen, who this is being written to. Uh -huh. Now, most most Christian apologists, amen, will when somebody says that, hey, well, if you just confess, amen, then you're saved. And, the, and, and a lot of us, especially apostolic, would say, no, that was written to the church. Amen. And that's right. But there's more to it. Now, in Romans chapter 10, 9 through 11, amen, Paul is specifically actually dealing with the Jews. Amen. Amen. Now he's dealing with the Jews. And at the same time, he's confirming some things for the Gentile brothers. Amen. Amen. And so we have to actually go a little bit further than to say that this epistle is for the New Testament church. But actually, these chapters, amen, were for the Jewish believers. Now, Paul goes further. And I believe in chapter nine, he says something of the sort that not everybody born of Israel is of Israel. And the point that he's making, amen, that it was not about you being born as a seed of Abraham. Amen. But having the faith of Abraham to truly be recognized by God as of Abraham. And so he's talking to the elect of God, amen, saying that if they, amen, would believe in their heart and confess with their mouth, then they shall be saved. Amen. 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 So it's not just the church Amen. That he's talking about it's more specific. Amen. He's talking about, amen, God's called out people, Israel. Amen. Now, this scripture, amen, is, is being quoted, actually, and take notes on this and go back to it later. Joel chapter two. Amen. This is being quoted. Paul is quoting Joel chapter two. And what we find in Joel chapter two is the prophecy of the end times and the way that God was going to deal with Israel. And the prophecy is letting them know that those that believe in God will not be put to shame. And he also says, amen, those that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, in Joel, the name of God was not revealed. And we are blessed to understand that that name is Jesus. The Bible says that he inherited a better name. Amen. And since his name is Jesus and he inherited a name, then the father's name must be Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So we know that the name of God that man shall call on is the name of Jesus. Amen. And so we have these prophecies. Amen. And so there's a very, very specific situation. And because of how specific this situation is, we can actually say that this passage is truly not appropriate for a sinner coming to God for the very first time. Amen. Amen. Now, again, I'm going to accept everybody's everybody's uh, moment of faith. Amen. If that's where you are. Amen. Come on, my brother and my sister. It's about to get exciting because I'm about to show you what's going on right here. Amen. That you can go further in the Lord and not be stuck and hung out to dry, but, at, at, but come to a point to be able to receive the power yes. that was promised. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so we got to look a little bit further. Pull it up one more time, Titus, um, uh, on, on, on Romans chapter 10. Now, if you look at 11 and 12, amen. I mean, 11 and 13, these scriptures are the ones that are, are quoted out of Joel chapter 2. But I'm going to go back to verse 12 because verse 12 is actually going to open our understanding in the context in which Paul is talking about. Amen. Verse 12, he says, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Amen. And so what he's doing right here is not only, amen, is he, uh, is he, is he, is he dealing with the rejection of Israel, but at the very same time, confirming the salvation unto the Gentiles. Amen. Why? Because what Paul is using these scriptures for truly is to bring out two words, um, whosoever and all. 
whosoever and all. And so what he's saying is that you Jews that are stuck thinking that God would only be for you, it's been prophesied that God always had the Gentiles in mind. And I'll take you back to when he even talks about how he's going to save you. The word that he used in those prophecy was whosoever and all, meaning that it was not uh, specifically only for the Jews, but one day at the appointed time, God was going to release salvation for all but people, Jew or Gentile, amen, bond or free, amen, black or white, amen, sin, a sinner and righteous, all, all men, amen, would have salvation extended, and this is what he's dealing with, amen, amen, amen. I'm okay, Robin, amen. amen, so there's a significant difference between the audience in Romans chapter 10 and a sinner. These people he's talking about, the devout of Israel, amen, have likely been, been faithful in the Day of Atonement. They've likely done all their sacrifices according to the law. They likely, amen, uh, followed the law, everything. But the challenge is what? They rejected the Messiah. They rejected the Messiah. Amen. 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 And so in the eyes of the Lord, amen, and as Paul pleaded to them, Amen. There's even a point in, I believe, chapter nine, when Paul says that I, I wish I could give up my life that all of Israel would be saved. If the Lord would just take me, that all would be saved. Amen. He was serious about this and he wanted them to come to salvation. But let's go ahead and take a look at this confession of faith in the eyes of a sinner since we've done that. Since we've have a, as a contemporary church has have introduced this confession of a faith to the sinner. Amen. Let's talk about what it looks like and what it means. Um, I hope y'all could be patient with me. Amen. Because I'm about to uh, uh, get into this word. Amen. 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 I'm okay, Sister Faith. Yes, I'm okay, Monique. Yes, Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my, oh, my trees gave me the clap, so I'm good. I'm ready to go. Amen. 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 And so let's look at these these words. Now, confession of faith, amen, and a statement of faith, amen. Confession of faith and a statement of our faith. Now, these are two different things, amen. When you look at, um, and, I, and I hate to really compare it to this, but I'll do this, the legal system, right, um, they may take, uh, the, the detectives may take a statement from someone. Yes. Now, when you take a statement from someone, it means that they saw something, they witnessed something, they heard something, and they're willing to give a statement of what they heard or saw, and now we can go to trial. Mm -hmm. Now, on the contrary, what the detectives really, really want to get is a confession. Mm -hmm. Because the confession says that not only did I see it, I saw it because I did it. And I'm the one, and I'm guilty as charged, and so though we go to trial, it's not really a trial because I've already confessed. As a matter of fact, they can ask me how do I plead. I can plead guilty and be done with the whole ordeal. And so we have to start looking at, amen, between a confession and a statement. And I'm just going to go ahead and get to the end right now. What we're seeing in this prayer, what we're seeing in this sinner's prayer is a statement of faith. I've heard about this Jesus. Amen. I've read about this Jesus. And I can as a witness, amen, that he's real. But the confession of Jesus says that not only did I read about him and hear about him, I've experienced him for myself. Amen. Amen. It's a complete difference to have a statement of faith and a confession of faith. Amen. And the word is going to show us what this looks like. Amen. The first and best example, amen, that we have in the word that I want to show everybody, amen, is coming from Matthew chapter 16, 13 through 17. Amen. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 17. Amen. This is the confession of Peter. Amen. Now, a lot of the theologians say that all that he, he, he confessed on behalf of the disciples. I don't know, because uh, we have uh, the Thomas doubted him and then, and then he believed later. Amen. But let's just take it for whatever it is. It's a confession of Peter. We'll leave it right there and, and hope that all of them, they, we know that they all got it eventually. Amen. Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 17. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? Now, right there, the son of man is to actually for him to identify, amen, his humanity. Amen. But I'm going to go further. Amen. And they said, some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? 
And, and I believe Peter stood up immediately and he was proud. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood, amen, and, uh -huh, glory, hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. Amen. And I just want to take a time out. I'm going and somebody go ahead and take a moment. I'm so glad that I understand. I'm so glad that the Father, amen, has revealed unto me. Hallelujah. The Bible, Jesus says, you are blessed when you understand, when you have this revelation. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you for the blessing, Lord. I've had that Peter experience. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And so Peter has a divine revelation right here. Amen. Peter has a divine revelation and is able to confess, amen, Jesus as the Christ. Amen. Now, Jesus recognizes, amen, by the words and the expression that Peter used that he truly understood, amen, who he was. Jesus knew, amen, that Peter is not just, amen, giving me a statement, but Peter yeah. is confessing. Amen. His understanding of who I am. Amen. Because he said, blessed are thou. Amen. Peter, uh, Simon Barjona. Amen. Why? Because he said that flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you. Jesus also in this passage pointed out his humanity. And what's that to say that even the works that he did and the way that he talked, amen, that was not what convinced Peter. Amen. Although he walked with Jesus for three and a half years and heard him preach and teach and do miracles and signs and wonders, these things, amen, cannot, amen, bring us to a true revelation of God in Christ. Amen. That he was the son of the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. You have to understand that. You have to understand that. I don't care how much scripture you quote, how much Bible you know, how many miracles you've seen, how many people you prayed for, unless God opens up your understanding, you cannot know Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Hallelujah. 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 It's not bound up in humanity. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not going to come from the words of my mouth today. I don't care what I say and how I break it down. There's nothing I can do this afternoon as I preach to you, Jesus Christ, that will reveal who the rule, the true and living God is is amen hallelujah i'm a leader to the scriptures and i'm a pray that i created with a, the lord will create an environment to add to your understanding hallelujah but i know i'm limited in my preaching and i don't care who you think is the greatest preacher uh whether it's dear Dar prince or gino or whoever i don't care who it is there's no man not even the man christ jesus could could cause peter to understand who he was there's nothing you experience in earth that's physical, amen, that you can understand it. I don't care what language you read the Bible in, or you got the Dead Sea Scrolls, the original copy. I don't care if somehow you got the original manuscripts that even Peter preached from. It does not matter. There's not a word, amen, hallelujah, there's not a pen that was ever written, amen, that can reveal this miracle, this wonder, amen, of who Jesus Christ is. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Somebody be humbled right now. You think you know, you have no idea who you're dealing with in the man Christ Jesus and what he sent for us. Amen. When we receive of his spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Somebody let's go ahead and worship the Lord so I can take a break. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's a little pre that's a little just FYI, that's a little evangelist trick. They say somebody come on worship the Lord so they can go ahead and take a break. Amen. And get a drink without knowing what's really going on. Amen. And if you future preachers, I just gave you a tip. No, don't worry about sending an offering. It's paid for. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now it seems that the disciples would have known this, but they just couldn't understand. Now, 
This is Peter's confession to understand of who Jesus was about. Now, but Peter had an, an inkling and an idea, amen, long ago, amen. And I've talked to this about Sister Faith, and for a lot of us, we, we probably read this and glazed right over it, amen. Or maybe I've said it before, amen, or maybe you just, amen, God has already enlightened you. But I want to take us back, amen, earlier, years earlier into Luke chapter 5, verses 4 through 9. And, and, he, and as Titus pulls that up, amen. Now, remember that as we read the Bible, you may read the whole book of Luke, and in two hours amen now the book of luke covers several years and one of the things that is a challenge to study the word of god is we forget this element of time mm -hmm. though it may have been two three four chapters previous doesn't mean it happened as fast as you can read it amen. thank you lord i like that titus thank you jesus amen and so luke chapter 5 verses 4 through 9 we'll read in king james version now when he had left speaking he said unto simon launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draw I don't know what a draw it is, but, uh, but, I, but it says it later what's going to happen. Amen. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And, thy, and when they had, done, had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. Verse 7, Titus. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in, in the other ship that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that, <laughs> there's a lot of fish, that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the draught of fishes, which they had taken. Now, many of us recognize this from Isaiah 6, Amen. When the presence of the Lord comes, amen, it says that the smoke, amen, in his robe, the hem of his garment filled the temple. Amen. He said, I am undone. I'm a man of unclean lips. And so we know that there's this experience that Peter has mm -hmm. yeah. to say that I don't know who you are, my brother. I don't know if you're an angel or a prophet, but there's something different about you. And I go back to my further point is that, amen, many a times, uh, uh, some of us, before we come to salvation, we have an experience to be able to see the miracles at the hand of Jesus. Do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. Many of us have been in church services and heard dynamic messages. Many of us has read the Bible and had great understanding. Amen. Many of us have been prayed for and, are, and had healing. Amen. Many of us have seen the water split and all sorts of miracles. And so we've come into an experience with Jesus. Amen. To understand, to know that God is truly God. Amen. But we did not yet have a revelation of who Jesus is. My mother-in-law gets it. I hope somebody else understands what I'm saying. Amen. Many a time we go to church, amen, and we have these experiences, and we work in the church, and we do these things, and we close our eyes, and we confess with our mouth, but we do not yet have the revelation. Thank you, Robin. Robin gets it too. Amen. 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 I may have to keep going, Robin, because this, is, this point is critical. Because too many of us have felt because God has used us or we've done something, amen, or we've seen something or we've heard something or that we're blessed and that we got this job or we got this wife or we got this car, all these things that we prayed for. But you have not yet had the confession of our faith. You have not yet experienced what Peter experienced Amen. When Jesus says, amen. Now, remember right here, Jesus does not say, Peter, amen, flesh and blood had not revealed that. But my father, amen, you know that there's something different about me. Amen. Jesus does not say that. But we know, amen, later when Peter says something, amen, amen, that we're just as reverent. Amen. Now Jesus says and recognizes. You've been touched by the spirit of God. You have been touched by the spirit of the living God, amen, who has taken you, amen, from, from, have, from being with me, amen, from believing on me, amen, amen, to understanding amen. and experiencing me and all that I am. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So let us go a little bit further. Amen. Amen. And I just want to challenge somebody. Amen. I know, I, I know you got baptized. Amen at Big Moss Church when you were six. Amen. I know you did. Amen. Hallelujah. And they prayed for you. Amen. 
Amen. I know these things. You have a reverence for God and you have a fear for God. Amen. I know that my brother or sister and God knows it too. And he accepts it. Amen. Because God is able to, amen, amen, deal with you according to your knowledge. We can't do that. Amen. My brother and my sister, some of us have church hurt because somebody did not accept that, amen, that moment that you believed in God. Amen. Somebody said, well, if you truly believed in him, you would do these things. Amen. And you probably ran away from church and you probably haven't been back since. But I just have to let you know, amen, that God did not reject you or deny you amen if you can understand amen if you can believe if you can have faith amen you are on your way amen. come back to that faith my brother and my sister amen. amen God has not changed his mind about you hallelujah hallelujah sister McKenzie said amen his gifts and calling are without repentance meaning that when he calls you he does not change his mind about you amen brother uh, if, if, uh, Robin if brother Doug can hear me amen let him tell him be bold and confident because the calling has not changed amen hallelujah amen hallelujah amen. it has not changed glory hallelujah thank you Jesus first Corinthians chapter 12 verses 3 Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to do my best not to keep y'all too long. Amen. Hallelujah. But glory. Amen. Somebody needs to hear this today. Hallelujah, Lord. I'll be obedient to God, and I'll ask for you all for your forgiveness and your patience. Thank you, Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 3. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Amen. No man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, we got a lot to talk about. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. There's a couple things going on now. We know that. Amen. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the 13, 14, Paul is dealing with spiritual gifts. I believe in chapter 12. Um, it is specifically uh, he's dealing with the church at Corinth because they were so excited that they were able to speak in tongues that that's all they did. Amen. Amen. They just got together and they spoke in tongues for five hours and got tired and left home and ate. Amen. And he said that nobody's been edified by that. Though you individually are okay. Amen. If a sinner, I'm paraphrasing, if a sinner or somebody from the world that's seeking God comes in here, though you guys may be getting something, amen, they'll receive nothing. Amen. And so uh, what the theologians believe about this first part of the scripture, amen, and amen, wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the spirit of God is to say just to rest assured to let everybody know that when some Someone is speaking in tongues. Amen. Anything that comes out of their mouth is holy and righteous. Amen. That it is impossible to speak in tongues, glorifying God. Amen. And to say something blasphemous. Now, that's what the theologians believe that Paul was correcting and saying that. Amen. And we understand that. Amen. When we that we uh, we we have the spiritual gifts, we speak in spirit, we speak in tongues. Amen. We're by the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's not my argument I'm going to make today, but I might make it next week. Amen. Hallelujah. If the Lord shall tarry. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And so that he, he wants them to know, don't worry about when people are speaking in tongues or people are speaking by the spirit. It is impossible to glorify God and curse God. It's, it's impossible to to glorify him, amen, amen, and cause him shame in the same time, amen. That's why we tell people it's impossible to live for God and live for the world at the same time. You're going to choose one or the other, but you can't do both, amen. amen. But, the, but more importantly, the point I really want to delve on is the second half. No man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now, okay, brother Isaac, let's go ahead and be practical. Amen. Uh, I, I heard the devil could probably say Jesus is the Lord. Amen. And I know that atheists, amen, have said Jesus is the Lord. Sometimes it's been a mockery. Amen. Amen. Sometimes before they left God, most atheists have had a, a lot of the ones I know believed in God for a moment. Amen. So some man led them astray. Amen. Hallelujah. But what do you mean then, Brother Isaac? Any man can say those words. You're true. You're right. You're right. That's my point. Any man can say those words. We saw how Peter, amen, recognized something. And later it's, it's called a confession. I talked about it already. There's a difference between a statement of faith and a confession of faith. So we have to dig in deeper. Now, Paul, what can you be saying? Because we know that it's possible that any man, amen, whether saint or sinner, can say that Jesus is the Lord. Absolutely, you can say that. You can say it in Chinese, you can say it in Spanish, and you can say it in French. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But there must be something else that Paul is bringing out. Amen. That we have to dig a little bit deeper for. Amen. 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 But to be noted, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 
It's only by the Spirit. Now, let me take us back to the Gospels for a second, amen, to try to build up a case, amen, but this Holy Ghost. Number one, we need to qualify because someone here doesn't even know that there is a Holy Ghost. What is this Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. How can I have it? Or what is it? What does it come? What does it look like? Amen. John chapter 15, 26. Bear with me, all you guys. I'm actually going in reverse order to build this argument. Amen. I'm going to go in reverse order, starting at John chapter 15, verse 26. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. John chapter 15, verse 26. Amen. And the Bible says, but when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, the spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Amen. That is worth a message in itself. Amen. Now, testify, my brothers and my sister. Um, we got a definition this week. Testify is this Greek word, uh, martyreo. Now, I'm not saying that right. Martyreo, something like that. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And a point I want to make here really quickly is that we have to understand that when we get this Greek and Hebrew, amen, it's not for us to look fancy or not for us to appear, uh, appear fancy, amen, uh, you can take it off for a second, amen, but what we're trying to let you know, amen, in that moment is the English word is not actually sufficient to really get the understanding of what the Bible is telling us. Now, we understand that, um, the, uh, and, and any of your uh, Hebrew Israelite friends going to let you know, amen, that there's certain words that didn't translate, amen, into English. And so they discredit the King James Bible because these certain words don't actually exist and they're 100% true. But God has given us the concordance for all of us that can't speak Greek and Hebrew, amen. Now, the problem with the Hebrew Israelites is the Greek and Hebrew Bibles actually exist. I just don't know how to read it. But I have a concordance that, that deals with my ignorance and knowing, only knowing English to be able to go and see what the word says. So I, I lend to you this definition for the sake of not me trying to be uh, fancy, but for you to change the word in this scripture. So let's go back to Martyreo, Titus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So Martyreo, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Martyreo, as the definition explains to us, amen. Uh, sorry, I had to go through my notes. They refreshed on me. Martyreo, to affirm that one person has seen or experienced something or that knows it because taught by divine revelation or inspiration. Amen. To affirm that one person has seen or experienced something or that knows it because taught by divine revelation or inspiration. Amen. 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 So that's to testify. Amen. The Holy Ghost, the comforter is going to testify. Amen. 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 Let me go back because there was another definition I had about confess because we're going to talk about this a little bit more. Amen. Amen. Confess. Amen. Is the Greek word homologeo. Geo. Something. Y'all forgive me. Amen. 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 And so to declare openly by way of speaking out freely, such confession being the effect of deep conviction of facts. Deep conviction of facts. This takes confession to a whole nother level. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's get back to John 15, uh, verse 26. Amen. Amen. So Jesus is letting his disciples know, amen, that the comforter is going to testify of me, which means that, amen, the comforter is going to go forth, amen, and prove to all the world exactly who I am. Amen. Amen. Every man or woman has a trial with God. We all come into the Damascus Road experience where we have a crossroads. Am I going to live for myself or am I going to live for my God? Amen. And, and in that point, we go to trial. We just, we, we're considering our lives, the things that we believe, the things that we want to know. And we need someone to testify. Amen. Hallelujah. But God knew that a man would toil with his beliefs. We knew that men would, 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 would feel guilty. He knew that men would repent. But it would take more than that moment of faith. Amen. It would take more than that actually to turn over your life. And so there had to be, amen, someone or something that can testify, amen, of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That testimony is necessary. Amen. Let's go to John chapter 14, verses 15 through 17 hallelujah take your notes because I may not do this justice but I bet if you pray over it and read it later on it's going to make some sense amen I just trust the Lord that way amen I believe him I have faith in his word and what he said he's going to do amen John chapter 14 verses 15 through 17 thank you Lord if you love me 
keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. We got this comforter word again. What is this, Brother Isaac? Even the spirit of truth, spirit of truth again, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. He dwelleth with you and he shall be in you. Amen. Amen. I'm going to skip down to verse 26. Amen. And I'm not cutting out nothing to make no false theology. You can read everything in between in your, in your, in your hearing or, or in, your, in your study time. I am going to jump down to verse 26. Amen. But the comforter, we got to qualify who this comforter is. Amen. The comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Okay, it's simple now. Amen. Whom the Father will send in my name, Jesus. So if all you want is people. Amen. I said earlier that he inherited his Father's name. And his name is Jesus, so the Father's name must be Jesus. And he said the, the Comforter is coming in his name. And his name is also the Father's name. And so we can say that his name is Jesus as well. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So I got a lot to unpack. Amen. And Lord, help me. Amen. Here we have the promise of the comforter. Amen. In chapter 15 that God said was going to come. Amen. And so we break it down to understand that this comforter, amen, is truly the spirit of God, the spirit of truth, which was sent by from the father. Amen. In the name of Jesus, that is the Holy Ghost. Woo, there's so much in there. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I told y'all. Amen. 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 He's one. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The comforter is the spirit of truth. It's sent by Jesus. Now, Jesus said, amen, to those he says, uh, we know that the Bible says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Uh, Ecclesiastes, I believe, 12, 13 says, fear God and keep his commandments. This is the whole duty of a man. Amen. So we have to understand, amen, that we have to show our love for God by keeping his commandments. And if we can, we can do this and we can show God, Jesus, that we love him, then we know that there is a promise unto those that do these things. Yes. Hear me. Amen. 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 Yes, we're saved by faith, but Jesus himself says that you have to follow a commandment that I give you. Whoo! Ha! Glory. That ain't making sense to somebody, but I know somebody understands what I'm saying. Though we do believe by faith and we're saved by faith because first you have to believe. But once you believe him, amen, you got to do something about it. Amen. Hallelujah. When you believe him, uh, with the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. The day that you know him or he shows himself to you, you have to do something about it. You have to do something about it. Amen. Amen. We were talking about with the brothers about that parable, that story that people tell of the person on the roof. And a lifeguard comes and said, hey, come get a ride. I'm waiting on God. And they send another boat. Hey, come get a ride. And I'm waiting on God. They send a helicopter. Hey, I'm waiting on God. Uh, no. Hallelujah. You just can't sit on the roof. You just can't sit on the roof. James said, show me, uh, show me your faith uh, without works. I'll show you my faith by my works because I believe who he is. I'll do what he said to do. And if I know through the word that if I do what he says he do, he said he'll send me another comforter. Amen. Who was the first comforter? Well, it was Jesus Christ. God in the flesh, he walked, amen, for three and a half years, amen, teaching men that they can be prepared to go first. He was the first comforter, amen, the first thing that we can see, uh, the presence of God, amen, with man, hallelujah. It was the first time that God was made available, his presence with man, amen. God was always there, and he put his hand on certain ones, and certain ones he didn't, hallelujah. But Jesus, amen, becomes a comforter. To those that come by him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, uh, take a, uh, there's rest in me. Uh, give me your burden. I got you. I do everything that you need. You just have to believe in me. But they didn't believe and that was the problem. And so they couldn't receive him. Amen. They couldn't receive him because they didn't believe him and they didn't know him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The world, amen, cannot Receive the comforter because the world, hallelujah, don't, can't see or know him. Now, when we go back to John, and, I, and to keep this in your notes, I don't have it today. John chapter 3, amen, when Jesus is dealing with Nicodemus, he, meant, he said, unless you're born again, you cannot see nor enter the kingdom of God. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Which means it's impossible unless you're born again. Amen. To be able to even see the kingdom. And when I'm talking about the kingdom, his kingdom here on earth. Hallelujah. Amen. And so Jesus is telling you hey, that the world won't know until they do these things to be born again. Amen. Who I am. You won't be able to get who I am. You have to repent. You have to believe. You have to be baptized. You have to do something. Amen. You have Hallelujah. to do something. Yes, my brother and my sister, it starts with you believing. Hallelujah. It starts with you believing, and it's, then it goes from repentance. But there'll be something you have to respond. I can't just tell you to repeat after me, amen, but you're going to have to respond to what God is doing. It's not a statement of your faith. Hallelujah. But it's action in your life. Amen. That leads you to a point when God is ready to give you his spirit. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Jesus help me. Hallelujah. Lord help me. Lord am I doing this right? And can the people understand? Amen. Now we understand the comforter is the Holy Ghost. So let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 3. Hallelujah. I pray that somebody's getting something. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 3. Amen. Amen. So when he says here, amen. Amen. I got to go back myself. I can't even see it on the screen. Eyes are getting old. Amen. Where, wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost, then to understand how you have to get the Holy Ghost. Amen. You have to love Jesus. Amen. And you have to keep his commandments. He told Nicodemus in chapter 3, you have to be born again. You must be born of the water and you must be born of the spirit. And if you will do these things and be obedient, then can you receive the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, which is the spirit of truth, which is the spirit that was in Jesus, which comes from the Father, hallelujah, but the under, by the confession of Jesus. <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I hope this is making sense. Amen. Hallelujah. When I'm starting to say that the difference between the statement of faith and the confession of faith, hallelujah, has everything to do, amen, with being able to confess a love by, by giving by the testimony, which we know the testimony is the Holy Ghost himself. And so what are you saying, Brother Isaac? I've talked a long time to say, amen, that this confession, amen, that Paul is talking about in Romans, amen, is not, amen, simply just crying out Jesus is Lord, but the confession comes by the testimony of the spirit that sent back that those that love God have received. And so when somebody who has received the Holy Ghost says that Jesus is Lord, it's not the same as a person without his spirit that says Jesus is Lord. For one is power and one is just a sentence. Hallelujah. One is a statement and one is a confession. Hallelujah. Or one Amen. It's going to leave you empty. And one is salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ah, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not about the spoken word. It's about the experience. Hallelujah. God wants you to have an experience. And when you have this experience, then you will understand, hallelujah, what it means that Jesus is the Lord. You'll understand what it means that Jesus is the Christ. You'll understand what it costs for you to come unto this knowledge, but until the testifier comes, you cannot confess your faith. Every, my brother, my sister, amen, don't be guilty, amen, whatever you said on that day, amen, amen, that was your statement of faith. Now, if you go to most church websites, they have a statement of faith. There's validity to it, there's value to it. Amen, thank you for believing in my God. Thank you, Jesus, that's the reason why I preach, so that men will believe. But my brother and my sister, what I'm trying to tell you is that there's more to the story, amen. I thank God that he's given you the ability to have a statement of faith, but my prayer today, amen, is that you can come into the knowledge of God and be able to see receive the witness to testify on the inside that you can confess your faith truly. Hallelujah. 
I don't want nobody to repeat after me. Amen. I can't give you my revelation. And I cannot give you what God has done for me. I cannot be saved for no one. Hallelujah. But you'll have to have the experience to be able to have a true confession of Jesus. Ha. As glory. Hallelujah. As Lord and Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to close here pretty soon. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ha. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Acts chapter 19. Amen. Verses 1 through 2. I'm going to close. I promise I will. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But I just want somebody to know that you're not alone. Even in the Bible. Hallelujah. There were those that were left empty. Thank you, Jesus. Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 2. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, hallelujah, Paul having passed through the upper coast came to Ephesus. And finding certain disciples, he said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? I ask somebody right now. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Amen. Hallelujah. Paul receives their moment of belief. Bring it up for me to Titus. Amen. And they said unto him, amen, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Amen. Now let me explain who these men are. I mean, now these are John the Baptist's ba uh, his disciples. Amen. Now I don't. Uh, we won't go so much uh, so deep. But if anybody wants me to walk them down the street, I'll take you all day long. Amen. Amen. Now, if you remember, John the Baptist gets locked up in prison, and John the Baptist is the one that baptized Jesus. The dove set across his head, and then he knew that he was the Messiah of God. Amen. And so he sent his disciples. Hey, go and see. Did we get him right? Amen. And he said, the disciple came to Jesus and said, are you the one or shall we look for another? I believe this was actually the message from our very first Sunday. Are you the one or shall we look for another? Amen. He said, Jesus said, the blind see, the lame walk. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The dumb hear. Amen. Glory. And the mute speak, meaning that look and see what I do. If you don't believe me, believe me for the very work's sake. Amen. That you can believe that I am he that was sent. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And so these disciples, amen, they had the same initial revelation like Peter at the boat. I know there's something about you. My, my uh, leader, my teacher, John, called you the Messiah. So we know that you are the promised Messiah, but we don't understand you. Why do I know that? Because when Paul comes, he says, have you received the Holy Ghost? And they said, you know what, my brother? We believe in Jesus. We saw him. We saw the dove fly over his head. We went to go visit him before John was baptized, and he confirmed these things, and we even saw these miracles. We believe who Jesus is. We believe that he's real. We believe that he came, but we have not received his spirit. Many people believe that there is a Jesus. You believe in the reality that he lived. Amen. Amen. But you do not understand the reality of his ascension, his resurrection, and what happens, amen, through the cross. And so he says, amen, have you received this gift? We don't even know that this thing exists. And that's the problem with church today. Many people are preaching a message way better than this one. And at the end, when the people want to know, what must I do? They just say, close your eyes and admit that you're a sinner and ask Jesus into your heart. And if you've done this, I didn't even hear you. If you've done this, then you are saved. Hallelujah. And they're shipwrecked. And they're living a life with no power. And they're struggling with the conviction of, if I'm saved, amen, how come I don't see a demonstration of his power? Now, I'm going to go a little bit further. The reason why a lot of churches denounce the indwelling of the spirit is because the spirit's not moving in that church. If many, many pastors are called, absolutely. But they didn't come, amen, to the point that they can repent and receive the Holy Ghost. And since they didn't receive it, it must not be, revealed, re be real because I know I'm called. Well, my brother, my sister, yes, you're called, but wait on God. Don't denounce, amen, something because your time has not happened. Amen, amen. Uh, my, my wife had a wonderful revelation. She said, uh, uh, she didn't say brother Isaac. She said, honey, hey, honey, I didn't understand. It didn't make sense. When the disciples come, they didn't just come in on a Saturday and leave on a Monday, but they stayed there for years. And so what am I saying? Amen. That many people, amen come to a moment of faith amen and years later God fills them up with the Holy Ghost amen it doesn't always happen boom 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 amen but it happens at the appointed time 
Amen. But in all how glory, in order for most of us to be able to receive, we have to know. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, the problem is, ain't nobody preaching it because they ain't got it. And if I tell you something exists that I don't have, then you won't believe me. And if you don't believe me, then I can't collect the church from the church board. And I got to go back and get a real job and be like these other brothers that have to work and try to feel, try to figure, figure out how to shepherd God's flock. I'd rather tell you something watered down and collect a nice work, check from my church. Amen. And leave you shipwrecked. Because I don't even believe this thing because I didn't wait on God. I didn't wait on God. Hallelujah. And so I'm going to close with the word of God. And this is not on your screen, but it's in your Bibles. Acts chapter 19, verses through 3 through 6. Give me a couple minutes, y'all. I'm almost done. Hallelujah. I'm going to close with the word of God. Acts chapter 9, verses 19, verses 3 through 6. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? Now, many people ain't baptized. A good friend of mine belongs to a church denomination. They don't baptize at all. And some people say it's just a, a ritual. Jesus said it, and I'm doing it. Remember, remember what I said. The problem is that we don't believe what Jesus said. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. He commanded Nicodemus to be born of the water and the spirit. So how does a man ever get up before God's people and say you don't need to be baptized? How gives you the authority to do that except for the Antichrist and the devil, your father? The only way authority you get from that is from the Antichrist. But we know that God had commanded us to be born of the water and spirit, to be born again. Amen. And then, then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people what they should believe on. Uh, that they should believe on uh, him which should come after him that is on Christ Jesus Christ being the Messiah Jesus amen hallelujah when they heard this they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus amen let me qualify this and I want somebody to get baptized if you can't come out here and do it find somebody to do it if you got baptized and they said in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Ghost I want you to go back to this is serious it's accurate it's as biblically accurate as we can they need to either say in the name of the Lord Jesus or in the name of Jesus Christ why because Jesus Christ amen is different than saying Jesus now I've said that the name of God is Jesus amen the reason why we add Christ is into the things of salvation because it is the Messiah that is the Christ that salvation is brought forth and so the most accurate thing that we do and anything that is salvitic that is mean is that is of salvation we should add Jesus Christ not because that's his name but that's the way that this thing comes forth come on, come on. hallelujah amen so somebody get baptized and come out here and I'll do it amen and if you don't have a church that baptized and calls explicitly on the name of Jesus Christ I'll call and call and call until we find someone amen hallelujah when they heard this they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus they were already baptized in repentance they were rebaptized the correct way into the name of the Lord Jesus and when Paul had laid amen his hands upon them the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied amen hallelujah they spake with tongues and prophesied amen they believed a long time ago amen when jesus said they didn't show the miracles amen they even repented and were baptized by john the baptist but then they came into the knowledge amen that salvation and grace came forth they were rebaptized in the name of the lord jesus and once they repented were believed amen were baptized in the name of the lord jesus then it says what that they received the holy ghost and begin to speak in other tongues and to prophesy why is this important hallelujah because not only did they have the experience of getting wet in the river amen but they saw a supernatural experience come upon them now i'll take you back to first corinthians 12 13 amen when it talks about speaking by the spirit of the lord amen we know that the spirit of god the holy ghost testifies and this is why i believe me personally amen and i can't come down from this that when god fills a man or a woman with his holy ghost that they prophesy or speak in tongues amen why because it's an experience that no one can take away from you it's something that god does that's supernatural 
that no man or woman can do without the spirit of God. Amen. And so when this man or woman begins to prophesy and speak in tongues, they speak the mind of God. And those words that come from their mouth, I'll let you know right now, they are testifying of salvation that came through the cross, that came through the death burial and resurrection hallelujah of Jesus Christ and this is why in Acts chapter 2 they knew that they couldn't that they were speaking and they were speaking the words of salvation that's why they heard Peter preach and they said what must we do to be saved I heard these men or women speaking in my native tongue and they were giving God glory and talking about test oh, glory. They were talking about salvation and the Holy Ghost testified of himself, letting you know, my brother, my sister, my son, my daughter, I want you. I've allowed you to see what's going on out of the mouth of my witnesses because I want you. I am calling you and I am drawing you with something that you can't understand. Hallelujah. But it is an experience of God. Hallelujah. That no man can take away from you. That once you have this, you will know me as God and Christ, as Lord and salvation of all these things that I am. You'll know my grace ah, is sufficient. You'll know my glory. You'll know I am who I see, I am, and I want you, if you believe, if you believe, the disciples, they believed, this is why I got to tell all my, all my safe, safe brothers and sisters, don't ever dismiss the point to a person's faith, if they believe God, and they said that to be saved, they had to eat fruit loops, amen, we know that's not right, but don't ridicule them, at least they believe. But for all of those who have confessed with our soul, with the way we, my confession is the way I live my life. My confession is how I say I put, I put off sin. My confession is everything. But for those that have the confession, then we have to help those that have a statement. If your family, if your friends, if they have a statement of faith, my brother and my sister, if you have a statement of faith, I'm not rejecting you, and I'm not denying you, but I do have to let you know there's more in store for you. There's more that God needs. I'm not going to say one. There's more that God needs to do in you. When you say Jesus is Lord, my brother, my sister, unfortunately, you're just saying words. But thank you for giving my God reverence. It's music to my ears. Amen. But what I want is the, the oh, glory. What even the Lord wants for you is to be able to confess him. Yes. He wants you to know without a shadow of a doubt that everything that he did was for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He wants you to have the comforter, the help, yes. the power. Yes. Every person that believes needs to have the indwelling of the spirit. And I'm going to go a little bit further. Amen. Everyone needs to speak in tongues or prophesy. I'm saying it through the Holy Ghost. This is not Isaac's opinion. And so my brother and my sister, you may have been saved for 30 years. Amen. Thank you for serving my God. But if you have not yet had the experience of speaking in tongues, amen, as the Bible describes, then God wants to do that for you. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not going to deny nothing that you believe. God didn't give me that authority. But I do have the authority to be able to proclaim to you the truth of the spirit of God and what he wants to do. Yes. And he'll confirm everything he's done. The spirit will testify in itself when you begin to prophesy and speak in tongues that you have truly heard and experienced God. You can confess and therefore there is validity. I'm glad I'm done. In Romans chapter 10 through the center. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your word. I'm done.